Hello, my name is Louise McCluskey and I am going to present this A lecture on brittle fracture and steel subgrade selection. This presentation is broken up into five short sections. A general overview of brittle fracture, the procedures to determine steel subgrades using BS 5950, Eurocode 3 and the published document PD 6695. And then there will be some examples at the end. So brittle fracture is most likely to occur at very low temperatures, therefore since most steel members are internal and protected from the elements then there's usually no need to check for brittle fracture. But for structures like bridges which are exposed to the weather extremes then it is important that the steel grade is sufficient. Brittle fracture should be considered where there are tensile stresses and welded structures in particular are susceptible to brittle fracture. Brittle fracture can be avoided though by choosing a steel grade with sufficient fracture toughness. So, brittle fracture is dependent on a number of different things. The steel grade, different steel grades will have different properties. The thickness of the element will also affect brittle failure. So, thick sections are more susceptible to brittle fracture than thin sections. Also, the lowest surface temperature, the material toughness, the tensile stress, and if there are any notches or defects, well, this can also increase the likeliness of the element suffering from brittle fracture because of increased stress concentrations around the defect. Stress toughness is measured by the Sharpie V-notch value, and the Sharpie test measures how much energy is absorbed by a steel sample at a given temperature. So the table at the bottom gives some typical Sharpie values. So for grade S275 steel, there are no Sharpie tests performed. For grade S275JR, a Sharpie value of 27 joules is obtained at 20 degrees Celsius. For grade S275J0, a Sharpie value of 27 joules is obtained at 0 degrees Celsius. And for a steel grade S275J0, a Sharpie value of 27 joules is obtained at minus 20 degrees Celsius. So basically, for a steel grade S275J2, 27 joules can be absorbed by the sample at a much lower temperature, meaning that the steel is much tougher than, say, S275JR. Now, according to BS5950 Part 1, the basic requirement that needs to be satisfied is T must be less than K times T1. And T is the thickness of the thickest element of the section, so that's usually the flange. K is a factor obtained from Table 3 of BS 5950 Part 1, and it depends on the stress level, detailing and the strain rate. And T1 is obtained from Table 4 or 5 of BS 5950, and it's the maximum thickness for a given steel grade and service temperature. So this is Table 3 from BS 5950. And this is where we get the K factor from. And in mo most cases, we'll be dealing with the welded generally case. And normally, the tensile stress would be greater than 0.3 times the yield. So that usually gives us a K factor of 1. And then this is the bottom of table 3, which gives some notes, but I'm not going to go through all that. So this is a uh, table 4 from BS5950. So from the table you will see that the maximum thickness is dependent on the steel grade and the subgrade used and also the minimum surface temperature. The thicker the steel section required then the higher the steel the higher the subgrade of the steel that you will have to use. So from the table you can see that the values for the internal and external temperatures are taken as minus 5 and minus 15 degrees Celsius. So we need to select a thickness which is greater than the flange thickness of our section and that's in the column of the surface temperature that we're dealing with. We can then read to the left and get the steel grade which is suitable. So that was just a brief overview of the method used in the British Standards. And now I'm going to talk about how the Eurocode deals with brittle fracture. Now in the Eurocodes the approach is quite complicated. Basically the surface temperatures are lowered so that they become reference temperatures. And you'll see it I mean in the next slide. Um, so instead of using the Eurocode approach, personally I'd recommend that you refer to the published document PD6695 instead and I'll talk about that in more detail in a couple of slides. So this is the table that you would use if you're using Eurocode free approach. So it's table 
and it's giving us the maximum permissible values of the element thickness. And you can see at the top row the reference temperature, which I mentioned before, so that's the surface temperature, and it's just lowered. For different stress levels, we would refer to different sections of the table. So there's a section for 0.75 of the yield stress, 0.5 of the yield stress, and there's also a section for 0.25 of the yield stress, but it's just not shown here. So basically, once you know what stress level you're dealing with, then it's quite similar to using table 4 from BS5950. And FY brackets T is given in table 2.1 in the previous slide. So it's the nominal yield strength FY norm minus 0.25 times T over T naught. T naught is a reference thickness, so it's one millimeter. So this can be sim simplified down slightly. So nominal yield strength FY norm minus 0.25 times T, and T is just the thickness of the element. So now I'm going to talk about the approach that I would recommend, and that's to refer to the published document PD6695 Part 110. And this is the method that I will use in the examples at the end of this lecture. So first of all, um, the approach is definitely simpler than using the Core Europe document. There are two tables. So first of all, table 2 for internal, where the surface temperature is taken as minus 5 degrees Celsius. And then table 3 for external, where the surface temperature is taken as minus 15 degrees Celsius. Also, it's worth pointing out that you can only refer to this document for design in the UK. So, design of structures in other countries, then you need to refer to the core Yugo document and then the national annex of that country. So, this is table 2 from PD 6695 part 110, and it's for internal steelwork where the surface temperature is taken as minus 5 degrees Celsius, as we said before. And on the left are the different situations. So, here we will most likely be dealing with welded moderate, and that's like the welded generally used in BS5950. You might notice that the tensile stress level, you might notice the tensile stress level, and we have the term FY brackets T, and this is calculated the same way as for the Euro code. So the way I showed you a few slides back. And we know that we're using welded moderate, and we can calculate the tensile stress level, so that will be either less than 0, 0 0.15, 0 0.3, or greater, greater than or equal to 0.5. So then we can read down to the limiting thickness, and then read left and determine the steel subgrade. So it's quite simple and I'll demonstrate how to use the table in the examples that are coming up. And this is table 3, so it's for external steelwork and the surface temperature is minus 15 degrees Celsius. So this is used the same way as table 2, so I'll not talk about it too much. Instead we'll just move on to the example. So I have two brief examples that I'm going to run through. And they're quite short, but hopefully they will help you obtain a better understanding of how to determine a steel subgrade using the published document approach. Um, so this is the first example. And we need to choose an appropriate steel subgrade for an internal S355 steelwork element with a 20mm flange and stress level less than 0.15. So we're going to check for two different detail types, so part A bolted and part B welded, welded moderate. Um, so we're dealing with internal seal work, so we need to use table 2. And part A is asking us to consider a bolted detail type. So if we go across and we know that the stress level is less than 0.15, we stop there and then we read down. And we're using S355 steel, so the first limiting thickness that we come across is 55mm. That's steel grade, and our thickness is 20mm, so that is suitable. We can then read across to the left and we can determine that the steel subgrade that would be suitable is S355JR. Now part B for a welded moderate situation, so again we know the stress level is less than 0.15 so we read across to the right until we reach it and then we read down and we know we're using S355 steel so the first limiting thickness that we come across is 37.5mm for that steel grade. Our thickness is 20 millimeters, so that is suitable. So we can then read across to the left and we can determine that the steel subgrade that would be suitable is S355JR. So basically, we have determined that for both scenarios, that S355JR steel is suitable. So 
this is a sac sample example and we need to choose an appropriate steel subgrade for an external S275 steelwork element with a 38mm flange and a stress level less than 0.15. So again, we're going to check for two different detail types, so bolted and welded moderate. So we're dealing with external steelwork, so this time we have to use table 3. Part A is asking us to consider the bolted detail type, so we go across and we know the stress level is less than 0.15, so we stop there and we read down. We're using S275 steel, so the first limiting thickness that we come across is 40mm, that's steel grade, and our thickness is 38, so that's suitable. We then read across to the left and we determine that the steel subgrade that, we, that would be suitable is S275JR. So now it's time to consider part B for a weld in moderate situation. So again, we know the stress level is less than 0.15, so we read across to the right until we reach, reach that. We then read down and we know that we're going to be using S275 steel. So the first limiting thickness that we come across is 27.5mm, but that's steel grade. And our thickness is 38mm, so that's not suitable. But the next limiting thickness down is 70mm, so that would be suitable. We then read across to the left and we determine that the steel subgrade that would be suitable is S275 J0. So for this example we were able to adopt S275 JR for the bolted situation, but for the welded situation we needed a tougher steel and had to specify the steel grade S275 J0. And this corresponds to the fact that welded structures are more susceptible to broken fracture and therefore often require tougher steels. So this example concludes this lecture on brittle fracture. Thank you.